is an iPhone 8 Plus. This is a Huawei Mate 10. The Huawei just announced in Munich Mate 10 dual rear cameras with f1.6 apertures. I cannot wait to test that out. We'll be doing full review of this, so stay tuned to the channel for much more on those cameras. But this video is all about how it stacks up to Apple's latest flagship. A flagship in a respect, it's not the most premium Apple phone that will be around this year. The iPhone 10 is going to be launching. The Mate 10 Pro, however, really does well knock the iPhone 8 Plus socks off in a lot of respects. Not in others. Let's start off with the design. You can see instantly the Mate 10 has a much, much better screen to bezel ratio. Six inches of full HD AMOLED display, HD on HDR10 certified in terms of hardware and software. That's versus a 5.5 inch IPS display, which isn't HDR10 certified in terms of hardware, but it does support HDR software. It can get in closer so you can have a close look at those screens next to each other. The iPhones, it has slightly crisper white soft angle, but it isn't quite as punchy, isn't quite as poppy. You can also see the additional bezel means you're going to get stereo speakers and a fingerprint scanner on the front of the iPhone, but you've still got stereo speakers on the Mate 10, which is super impressive, making it the second device that I've personally seen with stereo speakers and an 18 by 9 aspect ratio. Down at the bottom, USB type C, loudspeaker, right hand side power button and volume rocker up the top. You've got an infrared blaster, which is a sweet deal for anyone who likes their phone to be the TV remote control. It's that camera set up around the back and a fingerprint scanner that you can set to control your notification slider. As for the iPhone lightning connector down at the base and that loudspeaker, right hand side power button, left hand side volume buttons and that toggle, nothing up top around the back, that dual camera. One other key difference, despite these two both packing glass backs, curved glass back versus a flat glass back, the iPhone is the only one with wireless charging in a turn for the books. Um, Huawei's normally really, really good at adopting new technologies. Would have loved to have seen wireless charging on here, but still that glass back feels exceptional and metal frames across both feel nice and solid. In terms of in-hand feel, very, very subjective. Um, the Mate 10 is flatter and a little bit slicker, makes it easier to hold because of the flatness, but a little bit more slippery because of the slickness versus the more matte iPhone 8 Plus. Side by side, like I said, quick rundown of the screen specs all over again, full HD versus full HD, six inches versus 5.5 inches, very, very similar pixel densities iPhone might come off slightly sharper given the fact that it's an IPS panel but as far as the experience goes what you're going to need to decide is do you want punch and pop or do you want that teeny weeny bit of extra sharpness potentially and of course the IPS brings with it a few benefits such as pure whites off angles like I said. User interface is very very different it's iOS and iOS 11 running so the newest version with a revised control center much much more easy to and just pick up and get on with than old versions of iOS. You've also got a pull down menu from the top versus Android and it's Android 8 with Emotion UI 8. It's Emotion UI 8, not 7, not 6 from Emotion UI 5 because Huawei wants to get their Emotion UI number in line with the Android version and it is Android Oreo. Emotion UI kills the applications tray by default but you can bring it back. You can also get rid of the navigation bar at the bottom bringing it back with the slide and there are a few other neat enhancements under the hood. My favorite is the one which allows you to split screen view your notifications. So you'll get a notification in and then you can tap a button and it will actually display that application that sent you a notification in split screen view with another application. As far as the power under the hood goes you've got a Kirin 970 processor. Now this is a very machine learning centric processor, AI, neural core, it's all very neural processor even, very very smart. We haven't really seen too much detail as to how this is going to make it into the real everyday use of the device. But one thing that we do know is between Emotion UI and that processor, it's going to last a very long time without slowing down too much. An 18 month simulation, according to Huawei, um, resulted in 89% of the box fresh speeds, which is better than the competition. Again, according to Huawei, but stay tuned, we'll be putting it through real world tests ourselves. That's versus an Apple A11 Fusion, which benchmark like a champ it's literally the fastest 
chipset on the market right now. So these two are really hosting cutting edge tech, rather real world life gaming, multitasking and all that stuff will benefit from all of this tech by comparison to say a Snapdragon 835 remains to be seen. RAM capac uh, capacities though are higher in the Mate 10. You've got six gigabytes versus three gigabytes in the iPhone. When it comes to the camera, it is a 12 and 20 megapixel setup around the back of the, P of the Mate 10. And 12 megapixel camera, the main camera, the RGB sensor has, uh, I think it's a f1.6 aperture across both, but it does have OIS, whereas there's no OIS on the monochrome secondary 20 megapixel camera. They work together to provide you with all the great effects that we've seen in the past. And thanks to that AI processor inside the neural processor, it's able to do some very, very smart scene recognition. So I can fire up the camera, point it at a flower, and immediately it tells me that there's foliage and a flower on screen. Now, we'll, real world tests again will dictate what's different between something like that and a scene mode on another camera. Um, but if you've got any questions, please let me know what you want me to test out. iPhone camera is a very, very good point and shoot. 12 megapixel primary camera, 12 megapixel secondary camera, primary camera, f1.8 lens, f, uh, it's got 1.2 micron pixel sizes versus a secondary camera, which is uh, f1, a uh, 2.8 lens with one micron pixel sizes. So you're getting optical image stabilization on the primary one once again. What's cool about this though, isn't so much it's photography, even though it can do some banging stuff when it comes to photography, it is the video. It can record up to 240 frames per second full HD video, and it can record up to 60 frames per second 4K. Battery capacities, you've got under 3,000, in fact, under 2,900 milliamps in the iPhone versus 4,000 in the Huawei Mate 10. So guessing it will wipe the floor with it, and neither of these devices are expandable. And that, my friends, is how these two phones stack up in one very, very long-winded take, but hopefully you found it enjoyable. If you did click that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel to find out more about all of these phones thanks for watching